The Lord opened my lips and my mouth and declared praise. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. Sore afraid, as the King James says it, as heaven is ripped open, and the glory of the Lord shone around the lowly shepherds in the fields nearby. They're full of fear as God's one and only Son is coming down out of heaven, the gift of the Christ child being born for you, being born to bring peace, peace on earth and goodwill toward men on whom Jesus favor rests. So how is it with you this Christmas? Is your Christmas peace filled? Do you have peace? Yeah, right, Pastor. Look around. Look around in the world. It doesn't look quite peaceful out there. Look at the Middle East. Look at Germany. France. Terrorism is on the rise. Northern Africa. Where's the peace, Pastor? In our own borders, in our own country. Violence is on the rise. Discord abounds. And then even in our own families. Fights. Arguments, grudges, stubbornness, regret, broken hearts, and broken families. When it comes to Christmas dinner, many times the family that gathers at the table, it's like the Hatfield and McCoys. A war ensues. Arguments take place. Well, can't we just bury the hatchet? Sure we can. We can bury the hatchet, but I know where I buried it, and I can dig it up real quick. A song written a few years ago goes like this. Let peace begin with me. I won't sing it to you. I'll spare your ears. But in the midst of it, peace that begins with me is no peace at all. It's simply a pause, a truce, where the war has not ended, and the fights continue to ensue. Peace that begins with sinners is no peace at all. The shepherds in the fields nearby know their condition. They know they're sinners. And when heaven is torn open and they see the glory of the Lord and the angel of the Lord appearing, they think it's judgment day. Judgment upon the sinner. <clears throat> and these shepherds know what they've done. They know the hurt they've given and they know the hurt they've received. So they're filled with great fear. Fear and peace, you can't get any farther apart. Fear and peace. And we know what it is to be afraid. Fear for our own safety. Fear for our children. Afraid of living? Are you afraid of dying? Are you afraid of being alone? This Christmas, when it comes to our Christmas feast, There'll be an empty chair at the table. One less at our table this year. And for many of the brothers and sisters at Zion, they know the pain of death and separation. Fear for the new year. How are we going to pay for Christmas when all the bills roll in and we get our credit card bill? <coughs> Fear for the future. What does the future hold? Fear cannot be overcome by us. Not real fear. Fear that drives deep in the cords of our heart. Only God can. Only God can overcome the fear that grips us. So there's a Christmas miracle. A Christmas miracle in God coming down out of heaven. For you. It's the Prince of Peace. It's Jesus Christ. He's come to defeat your sin. And the byproduct to your sin is being afraid. It's what took place with Adam and Eve in the garden. They knew fear when they knew their sin. And they were afraid of God running and hiding from him. So God makes a promise to send you the Savior. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of His peace, there'll be no end. And the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. That's a miracle. That's good news of great joy. 
The Lord has come. And he's come for you. And he's come to turn your fear into peace. That's the miracle. Jesus comes to defeat your sin. And he's come to take your death. Look at his humble beginnings. The place in which Christ is born. He's not born in a mansion or a palace with the rich and powerful. A lowly manger. A barn. And there are their cattle feeding and the sheep are sleeping. Jesus' first bed is a feeding trough. It's a box for a king. And there's God. The angel announces, fear not. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you, born this day, is the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Prince of Peace Jesus will not stay in the manger. He's come for a meaning. He's come for a purpose. He's come for you. God the Father has work for him to do. And the work that Jesus has to do is reconciliation. To bring us back to God. Good news. Great joy. Jesus leaves behind the wood of the manger for the wood of the cross. That's where he's journeying. And he's resolute in his journey. He will not be deterred because Christ is born to die. He'll be pierced. Nails and spears shall pierce him through the cross he bore for me, for you. Jesus comes to die. Hebrews chapter 2. By the death of Jesus, he destroyed the one who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and has set you free who all your lives were held in slavery by fear of death. In Isaiah 53, Jesus bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him is the chastisement that brings us peace. By Jesus' wounds, you are healed. Healing in the wounds of Christ. And Jesus will exchange the swaddling cloths of the manger for burial clothes. He'll exchange the bed in the manger for a bed in the grave. There he lies for three days in the tomb. But death cannot hold him. It's good news, great joy. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. He comes to forgive your sin. And that's where the peace is. In the forgiveness of sins, peace be with you. It's a Christmas miracle driving away our fear. As Jesus says in John 14, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. The peace that Christ comes to give. That first holy night. That first silent night. There was no room for Jesus in the inn. The people of Bethlehem were too busy with their lives. Too busy shopping, too busy wrapping gifts, too busy entertaining, too busy working, too busy for Jesus. Not this year, Jesus, maybe next. So how is it with you? How's your life? Any room for Jesus in your life? In your ears? In your heart? Any room for the Savior? Or are you too busy? Are you too busy with the hustle and bustle, shopping, entertaining, business? Are you too busy with Christmas for Christ the Lord? Well, thanks be to God, he doesn't wait for your invitation to be invited into your life. God comes down and he butts into your life. He did it for you in holy baptism. He came to you and he said, you're mine. I wash away all your sins. I've come to bring you back to me. I've come to bring reconciliation. It's all a gift. A gift of God in holy baptism. It's Merry Christmas. It's God for you. John 1. To all who receive Jesus, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of blood, nor of the will of man, nor of a human decision 
but born of God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We've seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, from the Father, full of truth and grace. For you, the baptized, the life of the baptized children is fearless. No fear, not afraid, because the Lord is with you. The Lord is for you. It's good news. It's great joy. And as the Lord raises you and grows you in the faith, He invites you to His Christmas dinner, His Christmas feast. Oh, it's better than prime rib. It's better than carved turkey. It's communion with God. It's the Lord's Supper. It is Jesus' body. It is His blood. It's given and shed for you. And there's the peace. Your sins are forgiven. A Christmas feast full of peace. Rich in Jesus. On that first Christmas night, the angel of the Lord was preaching the sermon all about the Savior for you. And heaven and earth are joined together in worship of the Christ child. The angelic host join the one angel and they begin to sing. They sing to the glory of God. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace and goodwill toward men on whom Jesus favor rests. It's joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare a room. In heaven and nature sing. No more let sin and sorrows grow nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow as far as the curse is found. The wonders of his love repeat the sounding joy. The Savior is born for you, bringing you peace. It's a miracle, turning fear into peace through your sins forgiven, through the gift of the Christ child. And God has reconciled us to himself. Well, this peace on earth overflows to goodwill toward men. Now, since the Lord has forgiven you, you get to forgive one another. You get to forgive your spouse, your husband and your wife. You get to forgive your children. You get to forgive your neighbor, your family, your friends. And the love of Christ comes to you, and it overflows to how you treat one another. This Christmas will be different. This Christmas will be free from the fights because sins are forgiven. We're not at odds anymore. We've been given peace. And the peace we've been given, we are to share one with another. It's a miracle. It truly is. It's for you and it's for your family. So may this Christmas be one that is Christ-filled one that is free from fear and rich in peace for you and for the life of the world. And Merry Christmas in the name of Jesus. Amen. Rejoice, our Lord's gifts, rejoicing in his mercy. We as God's people cannot be silent. Filling us with his love, we confess him before the world. And today we use the words of the Apostles' Creed, page 159. Please stand for the creed.